we're going to be carrying on with landscape sketching this week. So the last session was sketching landscape thumbnails from imagination. And we're going to be continuing this, so still working from imagination, um, although I generally recommend when you're first starting out doing this sort of thing, it's useful to have some references around so you can check out things like Unsplash or just Google image search for different uh, sort of, to find sort of references for different parts of the, the landscape as you work. Um, I'm gonna be doing something based on one of the um, little sketches from last week. So we did four sketches last week and, and one, um, if you just watched that video was sort of like a river um, scene. It was in a square format. Um, had some clouds, had some sort of wooded hills on either side. So sort of like a valley that went down into a, um, down towards a river, sort of cloud scenes behind. So we're gonna be working bigger this time. So last time we were only working sort of roughly, um, actually I'm gonna move it a bit more under the light, my drawing. Sort of like an inch to two inches wide was what we were working with. Um, and I'm just working just so you know, I've just got a bunch of kind of odds and ends of charcoal that I'm using. And I've also got a, just like last week, I've got a, a white pencil as well. Um, and then just a kneadable eraser, which I just used. So using my softer charcoal, one of my small pieces of soft charcoal, just gonna sketch in a box. Sort of squarish box. And it can be pretty loose, this. Um, the only other thing actually I'm gonna use is I'm gonna get a, a brush just for some smoothing and texture. <clears throat> so I've just got this kind of like quite wide generic brush, generic sort of bristle brush. So I'll place the horizon, just like the last one, kind of like midway point. Uh, in the paper. I'm working loosely so I'll get kind of one valley down that side or sort of a hill sloping down another on that side. Maybe make it just slightly asymmetrical so I have sort of this point here a little bit higher than that point there. But that's roughly going to be um, the shape of the valley. Um, I'll use the same light direction, so the light's coming from up there, is what we're going to be basing all our sort of judgments on. So if the light's coming from up there, we know it's going to be kind of generally a bit darker on this left hand side, then sort of flatten out the flat of the valley before climbing up the other side of the hill. It's going to be lighter, so that gives us sort of some, starts to give us some sort of structure. So within this valley, I can start to then lay more specific. Um, features, I suppose, characteristics. So the first thing I'll do is I'll pop a sort of suggestion of a, of a river in, so it's going to be sort of snaking towards us as the viewer. with it. I'm thinking about how the bends sort of oppose each other. I'm looking at this, so it feels a little bit like we're looking down a bit too much. I want it to feel a bit flatter. And to do that, I'm gonna to need to kind of lift the sense of perspective. So we'll just erase what I've got in there. So this early stage of the drawing is sort of really exploratory, really. So I'm making it sort of go up higher. this yeah that's a bit better I'm 
Yeah, that's a bit better, see? I like the shape of that river more. So we've got a river in place now. We can start to think about how much do you want a sense of the, f the forest sort of sloping down? How much does the forest sort of make its way down? How much grass do you want sort of creeping up? So something like that starts to sort of give some definition to how the, the forest sits over this, this hillside. So those shapes there are just a loose sort of approximation of maybe how how that those hill trees might look sort of as we look over the tops of them. So we've got a sense of there being some sort of um, more sort of coniferous, so sort of pointy trees, and some that are rounder. So I'm just kind of varying that shape a bit, trying to create something a bit more more random than it being sort of super kind of like regular or repetitive. So you want to try to avoid repetition as much as possible. Likewise, kind of going up this side, we want it to feel like the forest kind of like sits on either side of the valley. So that means if the forest kind of reaches down to sort of close in in a similar sort of way down here. Something like that might be kind of appropriate. And again, we use similar sorts of random shapes like that. But this I'm going to keep a bit lighter, um, these trees, because I want to make it feel like, as we know, this side is in more shade. So that's the trees and the, the landscape included, and that side's going to be a bit lighter. So we've got our all our major forms in place now. Um, oh, sorry, last major form we want is we want some sense of a, a sort of cloud shape going up behind um, and maybe a little bit balanced kind of on this side as well. But first of all, let's get a cloud sort of emerging up behind the skyline back here to the horizon. Want to neaten that a little bit. So we've got start just by defining the edge of these clouds. Maybe some forms on the inside of them. But generally I just want to sort of outline them. So we've got this main one that kind of sits up there and then we might just try to get a sense of some smaller clouds sort of sitting just behind the side, just because it creates a little bit of balance and feel a little bit sort of lopsided. Um, if we kind of just allowed this to be where the clouds are and nothing else on the side. And I also just want to, similar to adding the shade in, I just want a general kind of lighter tone on this left hand side of the clouds, kind of left top side of the clouds. in there. So that's it for our kind of major major forms being blocked in. Now we want to try to elaborate them and, and add a little bit of a sense of realism to the scene. So the first thing I want to do is increase the contrast. It feels a little bit kind of flat at the moment. So primarily we can go in and darken out these trees in shade, or the trees on that sort of shaded side of the hill. Give them a 
little bit of a smudge, so just using the brush to brush to smudge out there. And generally, because it's a tree line, we're going to have kind of little darkish bits of shade near the bottom, so where the trees are going to be casting. more shadow. I don't want to avoid going too sort of regular again. So similar to what I started to do um, sometimes when I was putting shapes in this feels a little bit too consistent. So that's starting to build a sort of kind of tree, some tree like textures into there. And as I say, we want to kind of start to vary some of the shapes of them. So we want some to feel like they're rounded trees, some to feel a little bit more jagged the edges. And we can do that up here at this, this top edge as well that kind of meets the sky. Just start to add a bit of variety into that. And then as it cascades down, so that, that tree line's starting to look all right. We then want it to start to interact with the, the grass, so it's kind of casting a shadow and the land sort of wrapping down as well. So this side of the land's gonna be darker than the other side, which is what we've already sort of established as well. We're just starting to reinforce that. Then if we sort of work our way across as we start to reach this riverbank, we then want to think about, you know, maybe there are some sort of smaller trees or kind of isolated shrubs and so on that might be in that sort of plane and then getting nearer the, nearer the bank, start to add in some more shapes as well as though they're sort of overhanging the river edge. Then the river edge itself, because it is a bank, is going to have a certain thickness to it and then also start to kind of cut back into the land. So you want that to sort of wrap up as well. So it's kind of like a shadow form, then a lighter form, then another shadow form dropping down into the river.
So you can work back into that. You can sort of mess around a bit with, say we wanted to make it feel like there's maybe a little bit more of a glow hitting this grass. You can use this eraser to lighten stuff off. So it's pretty malleable. Create like kind of slight sense of highlights. Maybe you want to make the edge of that, these bushes a little bit brighter, like they're, they're catching a little bit of light like that. Looks a little bit better. Maybe merge them into the, value of the grass. Yes, yeah, so that's a bit better. Felt slightly heavy, so this, this lightning actually is starting to to help it, so that's good. So likewise with this water, now that we're moving into the water sort of section, I want to think about what's going to be reflecting and sort of how it will look reflecting. I'm going to make it kind of quite smooth water. So anything along this river edge is going to be reflected, obviously. It might be some sort of smudging of it. But for the most part, we're going to capture that all the way along this edge. So if there's a shadow, there's going to be a kind of duplicated shadow. It's not too bad. So as I get to this point of the the river, I want to just spend a little bit of time working on the clouds just because they're going to be reflected in the water. So let's kind of like exaggerate them slightly. And we're certainly going to have to make them a bit lighter so I can sort of generally kind of lighten the clouds off. But they're going to be lighter at the left hand edge, so. That's just a case of reinforcing that that lightness. But then as we get down into the the water we want to make sure anywhere where the cloud is behind that's gonna be reflected in this water obviously. And that's gonna make that's what's gonna make it feel like it's it's actually water. So we're thinking about the shapes clouds just would be up. And they can be softer and more sort of smudgy in the water, but generally we're trying to copy that sort of from top to bottom. Yeah, there might be a little bit of cloud down there as well. That's starting to work reasonably well. I'm going to swap to a slightly harder charcoal, maybe just go in and start to sort of darken some of this off slightly. And maybe also go in and give 
the sky a little bit of the of a gradient as well so you kind of darken that slightly too yes that's not too bad so you know in terms of the limitations of using your imagination you can sort of sort of max out how much you could possibly imagine. I'm getting pretty close to that with this one, so I'm gonna put some some more little shrubs sort of balancing on this side, but I generally want it to feel like the left hand side's catching a lot more light. So I don't want to go too overboard with tone. Um, keep all my tones a lot lighter on this side. You know, maybe the odd bit here and there where I want it to feel like a tree's a little bit darker or something like that. Maybe a little bit, stuff that's a bit nearer can go a little bit darker and down this area here or for imagining some shrubs and so on a bit closer to the viewer. Generally, that's not too bad for this one. So the last thing I'll do, like we did last week, just to reinforce these edges my composition and yeah that's pretty much it so you can see sort of how it functions um, we're just working from a sort of basic idea and then just trying to elaborate kind of imagine as best we can how the light is going to be interacting with forms you know what the in inherent textures are so obviously the tree forms have different inherent textures to the, the kind of grassier landscape what's the bank going to be doing what does the cloud roughly look like where is it going to be um, and then we've got something like water how is it going to be reflected and so on um, but yeah that's it pretty much um, for this this session hopefully it was interesting and um, as always you can subscribe to the YouTube channel to keep up to date with any new tutorials or you can follow the link through um, to sign up for um, OCAD Studio where you'll get tuition from myself and, and other teachers. Um, yeah, that's it for now um, and I'll see you guys soon.